Good morning. Welcome to Holy Cross on this fourth Sunday of Advent. Please join us in our opening hymn, number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, just after the gray pages in your hymnals. Number 39, please stand. Captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I'd like to welcome all of you to our 11 o'clock Mass here at Holy Cross. And we members of Holy Cross extend a welcome to our visitors, those who are from other, other parishes, those who are in town, maybe for the Christmas holiday, from out of town. Also, we want to welcome those who may not be Catholic who are joining us today. We appreciate you sharing your faith with us. And for those who are streaming this Mass today, we include you as present with us as we offer this worship to the Lord today. As we come together, we seek God's mercy to help us be worthy to celebrate these holy mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, sinned in my, my thoughts, in my, my words, words what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in a house of cedar, while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. 
I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise you up, your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him and shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing is impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Well, Christmas is very close, so only just a few hours away from here. Um, hope you got all your Christmas shopping done and so forth, and all your plans are working out and so forth. But I think it's important to realize that sometimes things don't always go exactly the way we plan, and that is disturbing sometimes. Um, David, uh, in today's first reading, planned to do a wonderful thing for God. He wanted to build a temple because uh, the temple that they had was, uh, was a tent. He wanted to make a structure you know, to praise God, to glorify God and so forth. And um, God refused. He says, no, I, 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 don't, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to uh, build a temple for me. Don't try to take care of me. Let me take care of you. And so God's reaction was, no thanks. Again, I will be uh, okay, and your son will eventually build that temple, but cancel those plans to do that. And I'm wondering how David really felt about that, but that was what God wanted, and he basically said, okay, we'll go along with what you want to do. Um, then we come to Mary today. Now, Mary was a betrothed to Joseph. That was an arranged marriage. Back in those days, you didn't pick your spouse. Your family picked your spouse. And so it was her plan uh, that she was going to be married like all the girls back in, uh, in Nazareth and so forth. And so she's um, uh, looking forward to that, that wedding. Um, and um, all of a sudden, an angel interrupts her, Gabriel, and says, uh, Mary... Uh, you're full of favor. You're full of God's grace. And uh, change of plans. And Mary's kind of disturbed by that a little bit. Uh, she doesn't understand what all this kind of means in the story. And then, of course, Gabriel begins to tell her that God has different plans for her, that she's going to become the uh, mother 
of the Son of God. And uh, again, she's troubled by this interruption and asks questions, how can this be? I, I'm not even married yet and so forth. And so uh, she, she listens, she listens to Gabriel and Gabriel tells her what's gonna happen and so forth. And she does not respond by saying, look, at, you know, it sounds like a good idea, but I'm gonna kind of go with my own plans. She doesn't do it that way. She basically says, I am the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. In other words, not my will be done, but your will be done. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, that's hard, that's hard for us to do because we, we, we make up our own minds and we think what we do is the right thing to do. And sometimes an interruption comes in and it changes our plans and maybe changes our perspective. We may not always agree with it, but we go along with it because we feel like, well, it's probably the better thing to do. Uh, just before this mass this morning, we had a debate in the sacristy, a debate. And I turned to the deacon and I says, why aren't we turning the lights on on these trees? I says, and they said, well, it isn't Christmas yet. He's technically right. I said, but everybody else got their trees lit up. Why can't we have uh, these trees lit up? He says, but it isn't Christmas yet. And the, sa the server gr agreed with him. I was two to one, you know? <laughs> and so I basically said, okay, you know, we'll do it your way. You know, and uh, so it's, it's fine. You know, sometimes we have to kind of go with the majority. And so I'm, I'm okay with that. Although I like to have seen those, can, those can we, I was gonna have a vote, but I'm not gonna have a vote, okay. <laughs> anyway, just to, just to remind us again that, you know, life isn't centered on us. There's more uh, in our life than just ourselves. We have to take in consideration uh, a lot of other things. We're a part of a greater plan in our life. Just like Mary is a, was a part of a greater plan. She didn't even imagine that was going to happen to her. But because of her yes, it affected us, allowed us to receive the Savior on Christmas Day. Again, it's hard uh, trying to be in control of everything, thinking that we have all the answers. Sometimes we have to have a flexibility in our life and knowing that sometimes our plans may not be the best plans. And sometimes that might break our pride a little bit. Like, I think I got the best plan. I think we have to have a sense of openness to other one. And we also, during this time of Christmas, have a sense of humor, especially if things don't turn out. Um, sometimes you may not get the present you want. Uh, sometimes um, people don't show up or uh, there's uh, something goes wrong at Christmas and so forth. We have a snowstorm starting tomorrow, maybe, possibly, that could ruin some of our Christmases, possibly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important for us to understand that, that God is always in control, that whatever interruption comes our way, you know, we, we deal with it knowing that God uh, could be uh, allowing this to happen for a greater reason and for a greater purpose. Um, I wish all of you a, a Merry Christmas uh, this Christmas season and always remember that God came amongst us to show us the, the right way. You know, I think that's the problem in today's world that nobody is thinking there's something greater than themselves to help make them the right decisions. And we, come, we have, we have the, the, uh, the, the privilege of knowing that Jesus is God's son who came to show us the right way to choose what is good and right and wise and the right way to love one another and the right way to live our lives in this world. So Lord, uh, you are in charge, you are in control, and we place our trust in you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now present our prayers petitions to our Heavenly Father. We pray that the Lord protect Pope Francis and all clergy of the church and guide them in leading the church to greater love and service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Prince of Peace, born in Bethlehem, prevail upon those now at war in that very same region to seek peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord comfort, strengthen, and heal those who are ill or suffering in any way. And for the intentions on our prayer line, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God, our Father, heal and sustain all those suffering poverty, homelessness, isolation, or loneliness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May our Father be with and comfort all who are awaiting the birth of a child. And we pray that these children may be healthy and strong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all serving in the military or away from home this Christmas season, and all first responders, that God will protect them from all danger and bring them home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will welcome those who have died, especially Patricia Wolf, into the peace and joy of his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May God grant the intentions we bring here today. And for Dick and Carol Divig, for whom this Mass is celebrated, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we praise and thank you for the greatness of your love for us by sending us your Son, Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to look upon our petitions, grant them to us according to your will. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 52, The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, number 52. <clears throat>
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watching in prayer, exultant in his praise. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You're indeed holy, O Lord, and all that you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously Make holy these gifts that we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these holy mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the whole world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of God's peace. Peace of Christ, Thomas. Good to see you again. Peace, slave. Hello. Peace, Michael. And may his Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Join in our communion hymn number 73, Bread of Life, number 73. And now the prayer after Holy Communion, the Anima Christi, which can be found on the blue card in your pews. Soul of Christ, Christ sanctify, sanctify me. me. Body, Body of Christ, Christ save, me. save me. Blood of Christ, Christ me. Water, water, me. water from the side of Christ, Christ wash me. Passion, Passion of Christ, Christ strengthen me. me. O good Jesus, Jesus, hear me. Within, within your wounds, hide me. Never, never let me be separated from you. From, from the evil one, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me. 
and bid me come to thee, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. And now our missional prayer, which can be found in the front cover of the Missalette. Who am I, Lord? That, that you should come to me. me. Blessed, Blessed is your holy name. name. Open up my heart to accept, accept you into my life. life. Take, Take me as I, I give myself to you. And let me know you, love you, serve you. Open, open my ears to your holy word, word so, so I can follow your teachings. Clear up my eyes, drive away the distractions of the world that prevent me from seeing you everywhere. Let me know your holy presence in the Eucharist that is given to me to be Christ to others. May your Son, Jesus Christ, be my Lord and Savior, and send me out to proclaim the gospel with joy, humility, and thanksgiving. Amen. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward with all more eager, eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May all the peace, the power, and the blessings of Almighty God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord <clears throat> by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join in our closing hymn, number 64, <clears throat> Let the King of Glory Come. Number 64. <clears throat> 